Uh, now we are now we're recording. Um, and it looks like we have a second guest even, Cat Camp. Well, welcome. Good stuff. Um, I have like a little bit of a backup plan if we're running out of ideas, but I'm, I'm curious uh, what, what um, brought you guys on here. If you have any specific question, maybe, um, or if you just want to chit chat about <laughs> cases which haven't worked out or have worked out. Um, I guess the biggest question I have, this is something I've been struggling with. Um, I, uh, I do mostly quadrant, uh, dentistry. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't have those clients doing full arches anymore. Like I used to in the past. But, um, and recently, uh, all of a sudden, I, I used to do a lot of diagnostic wax ups back in the day, uh, but I kind of got away from that just because they weren't coming in. Um, and now I'm doing them, I, all of a sudden I'm getting diagnostic wax ups to be done again, but I'm doing them digitally. I'm designing them on ExoCAD because I'm a, I'm a 99 and 44, 100% digital lab now. That's awesome. Okay. And, you know, I rarely ever get a traditional impression in um, and like it that way. Um, when I'm doing the digital uh, design, you know, I'm designing digital uh, wax ups, I guess, yeah. mock ups, uh, sometimes it's called. And uh, I have Galway, uh, but I do not have Model Creator. Again, one man lab can only afford so much software. Yeah. And so I, I kind of struggle with the all the videos I've watched. You basically design your case and then you save each piece that you, you know, each ponic that you uh, waxed up as an individual piece. And then you open up the case again and you, um, you bring in the uh, working model as a wax up. And then you add in your individual teeth one at a time uh, to create this mock-up so I can get a model printed. Um, and I mean, there's a few more steps. I've kind of glossed it over. It, it's, it just seems convoluted to me just to be yeah. able to do a diagnostic wax up. So I have, to, I have to think a little bit more without the model builder. Um, there may be some extra steps required. The model builder makes it easy. And meanwhile, in Galway, you actually have the ability if, um, of creating a, a wax up model or mock up model if you would have the model builder. But of course, since you don't have that, um, you could still, I don't think you need to save them individually. Uh, what I have done in the past before Galway and before the, uh, the software gotten a little better in that regard, I would basically throw Pontix there. And um, at that time, there also was no extract tooth feature like you have now in Galway, which is great. Uh, so I would go into freeform scan data and I would um, basically freeform and, and quote unquote prep the tooth where it was sticking out somewhere, you know, where you would say, okay, that the doctor has to reduce there a little bit, um, that you have the room for your wax up, your mock-up. And then I would just place Pontix on top of it so that they are slightly larger than what the, what the teeth on the scan data have been. And then you would uh, right click on the save button and save everything as an STL file. Uh, meanwhile, there's an option export seam to mesh when you right click. When you say everything, are you talking about the Pontix or are you talking about talking the entire about case? The, the Pontix and the model. And the model. So okay. I would, I would uh, disable the uh, antagonist and then save the, the Pontix and the model, everything in, in all in, in one run. And then depending on the printer software you're having and depending on the printer you're having, you might have to then clean that up. And, and whether or not, I don't know, you're using Mesh Mixer to do that, but you're basically having the Pontix um, intersecting the scan data and your model is an open shell at this point. So somehow you have to close it. You can, however, use ExoCAD to close the model. That's not going to look very nice and flat. So it's it's just going to close it. It's, you can 
you can edit the mesh and trim that as a flat plane and that might help um, some print software can help you closing a mesh uh, so there's there's from that point on I, I think there's there's a couple of different ways and, and it would probably make sense to look in specific what you have and what the easiest is I used the next 5100 at the time and I, I found that relatively easy cleaning things up um, and solving errors in there most uh, printer software has a little button where, where you can fix um, self intersections I believe they call so it. one more piece of my situation is I don't do any printing or milling here I, I outsource see. all of it yeah okay so I basically design everything and I finish everything mm -hmm. everything in between I send somewhere else so my place where I get them printed has a model creator and they do all those steps for me. However, if I don't get all the steps on my end done properly and get everything closed, um, they, for whatever reason, I get, I get uh, models back where you can see where the teeth are connected to the base of the, you know, connected to where the gingiva would be. You can see these little holes as if they were printing separate things and um, let, me, let me see what i have here as sample data maybe i can show you um let me look at this one yeah i, I know i'm not sharing my screen right now i'm just digging for some usable scan data now, i do have a question are you now doing tech support for exocad uh, I do as well, yeah. So if you have a question, I can I can also uh, remote in and, and help you out. I think I found something that is usable here. Okay, so let me grab this <clears throat> screen here. Okay, um, it's currently even near case, but that should work. So I'm going to just duplicate that. Okay, scan data. And let's see, anatomic pontic maybe. Material doesn't really matter at this point. And we usually don't need connectors. And I'm assuming you don't have like the um, extra provisional module. No. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if I have that one or not. I I know it shows up in my database. I haven't uh, used it the times that a few okay. times that I've done uh, temporaries. I've just I've, I've just I've had prep preps to work on. So. Okay. Yeah, that that could be another option, basically. Um. All right, so here we're in the scan data editor, and this is already cut pretty pretty flat. But if it wasn't yeah. for some reason, we can we can basically. Trim. Yeah, I know how to I know how to trim the models. So right, but what, what I'm trying to say is if if it is if it's not flat, just trim it flat like this is because right. now you can say select all, and then you can say uh, close holes which will close your model relatively even. So now, now that is something what is printable and a moment ago it was not. Okay. Um, and I, that's pretty much what I did the last one I did and it seemed to be the best, uh, the best way for it to work was I just told it to close all the holes. Yes, exactly. uh, and The model I got back was very nice. So yeah. um, it's just that it, it seems to me that, to, that since backups is part of the software, why do I have to do the work in one case and then open up another case and work on it. Um, it just, just seems odd to me. Uh, it seems to be working, but a lot of steps. Good thing I charge a good price for these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my Pontix. 
And um, this is what I was referring to, something sticking out. Yeah, I'd have to right. form that. Um, right. So you would, you might have to go to, and I, I'm just going to uh, place that a little bit different so that it might not stick out. So I don't have to do that now. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, you would basically do this, um, have them slightly larger or at least on, on one side. And, and that could maybe be a complaint where they're saying, well, I, they, they're intersecting themselves. The, the print software will complain about those self-intersections. Um, but some of them, are, or the majority, has a fix button and it can fix those errors. And it might, on the next 5100, I'm used to clicking that two or three times and then it's usually printable somehow. I'm surprised if, if the printing center where we are outsourcing that doesn't has an option to, to help you with that and fix that. But let's say that was all perfect and, and I, I could go in here and, and make them all slightly bigger that they're positioning them in a way that they're covering the complete tooth a little better. Yeah? Um, I'm not gonna go through all of that now, but I wanted to show you, if you right click the save button here, you can say um, expert scene to mesh right here. Or even if you yeah. say, Save scene as right you can switch it down here into an SDL file. And the key here is that you're using an open library which supports that. So your FF file format, not an um, uh, SDRF, I believe it's called. And export scene to mesh. And then let's say desktop, let's save it. Visible objects only. Yes, that's fine. And then we should have on our desktop this merged file, which hopefully is printable from whoever you're sending that to. And of course, if I would have made a better job, yeah, placing the teeth here better, etc., sure. then, then you basically have something which should work. Um, yeah. And I believe you can, you can, if they had some issues, I'm not the best in mesh mixer, but you can, I think, um, also clear uh, the errors out of some free software such as mesh mixer or... Um, well, the printing company suggested I open the case in, in Microsoft's 3D, mm -hmm. 3D view or whatever it is, and uh, then it'll tell me that there are errors and, and I tell it to fix. Yeah. Uh, so I've been doing that on cases before I send them out. It just seems like a lot of steps, a lot of a lot yeah. of extra steps, and that's uh, I just kind of thought maybe I've 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 watched <laughs> I've watched a bunch of videos. Of course, most of them are are not Galway um, uh, on on how to do this, and so it, you know it, it's it's mixed information basically yeah. because it's Plovdiv and it's uh, previous versions and and. Uh, and I, again, the software, the software market, there are so few people like me in the industry that uh, obviously the software engineers don't think of me when they're, when they're designing the software. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay, here, look at that. I made a mistake. Uh, it still has those disks on there <laughs> from the <team. laughs> um, That's, uh, that's hysterical. Uh, I don't. I don't really see the the fix, but it, it's probably because I'm using the 3D viewer, and there's like a 3D print. Where is this thing? 3D. I know there's another viewer for this where you can actually order a print even there, but I don't know. It's not showing for me here. When I say open this, um, I thought it was maybe paint 3D, but I tried to open it. There was no error with that either. Yes, um, but I, I would, yeah, I would then just follow what they're suggesting, what to use. Okay. Um, I think um, Mesh Lab is another one where you could also fix some errors in, but it's um, sometimes those, the, the free software is a little convoluted with a whole bunch of different buttons and settings and, and um, it's a bit of a struggle of managing to to find the right thing other than watching a YouTube video on how to 
resolve those or getting some advice from what, what the company where you're sending it to, I think that's the best way. Okay. Well, I, I'm finally getting, um, I've done enough of them now. I'm finally getting comfortable with the process. So I don't second guess myself every time I do a step. Um, no. So, um, so I just, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And I think I finally got the, finally got it down to where uh, doing it without errors. But uh, I just was, I was hoping you were going to say, oh no, there's a real simple way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. But the problem is that's the model builder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. But model builder is pretty pricey and uh, uh, it, isn't, uh, it isn't worth it for me to go that route. So I'll just have to do what I'm doing. Yeah. But at least you can you can save them. Um, if if I would have uh, clicked next, um, you know, gotten out of that chain mode where I was, so that it that it doesn't save the the disks there, um, it's easier saving it that way. Then then you're you're pretty pretty quick. Yeah. Instead of each tooth individually, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And then the only thing that really is is very likely then to happen is that the the print software is going to either complain about self intersections. Uh, which is basically a pontic um, cutting through the scan data, or that the uh, the scan is not closed, which okay. we did in the editor. I have one more question. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of people showed up for this thing. Uh, that isn't my question, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I purchased uh, Galway uh, end of March last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, have there been any updates? As I'm still working with the version that I got when I bought it. You bought it in the March? End of March, yeah. Of last year. Of last year, yeah. Yes, I, there there should be an update for you, and and we can we could certainly help you with that um, and make a team mural session and, and maybe schedule something for for when it uh, when it works for you. And um, what I what I usually think is a good idea to do is leaving the version you are currently having on there and leaving it alone, and then making you some additional desktop shortcuts so that you can, if you're running yeah. into an error or a bug or something in, in the new version, that you you know what it worked in the version before, you have a you have a fallback option. computer up and how slow they are to wake up. Mm -hmm. So I'm on uh, build 7754. Okay, let me go look. I'm going to go look right now on what's available. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dun, 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 dun. In there here for a moment. Sorry, I have it in a moment here. So right now I see the download for 3.0 Galway engine build 7754. That's exactly what you just said. Um, oh, so that's the current one, huh? Yeah. Okay. Take it back. Yeah. All right. Well, then I have the current version. I, so that yeah. answers that question. 
that, that does answer that one. And yes, you're right, there's not a whole lot of people. We have um, Miguel here in the background being quiet. And um, CapCam, I would almost assume that is probably Jason. Um, chat. Yep, Miguel actually sent a chat message that it is the current. So he confirmed. Okay. Yep. All right. So what exciting things did you want to show us? Ah, uh, well, this is this is kind of like just an open place for for folks to to join in. Like, hey, um, I I didn't have the question to or the the chance to ask this particular question. Can you show us? Uh, and hopefully, uh, uh, you know, there's the, the more folks are joining, the more question coming in, the more fun it's going to be. I think um, what I had prepared uh, or in the back of my head was recently the question came up: How can I make a, a custom tray with um, uh, the CatCam software or ExoCat, and um, I, I still have that one lined up. And I think we have um, someone else who just joined in, Benny. Hi. Um, Hi, how are you? Good. How's it going? Not bad. Awesome. Do you have uh, Do you have a question? Uh, not right now. No, I came in a little late, so. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for joining in. Uh, Thank and of you. course, we're, we're recording it, uh, and if hopefully that what we chatted about before is interesting, then uh, um, you can watch the recording. Then, of course, we were talking about what's the latest version, software update, ExoCAD, three um, D printing without the model builder, making a wax up mockup. Here, try to find it. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes, put it on loud and clear. Okay. Sorry, there's noise. I'm milling at the same time, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What, what mill do you got? Uh, I have actually the Sarah mill. Motion 2? Motion 2, yes, correct. Awesome. And I just got the printer, uh, Formlabs, uh, the B+. Plus. Okay. How do you like I got that one? Form 3. Well, I got the Form 2. I'm, uh, I'm just getting the Form 3. Uh, B plus. Awesome. <clears throat> A really quick milling all the last cases before the weekend. Yeah, I got all this work that I'm piling up, and yeah. I work for a practice now, but I'm I'm doing my own thing too on the side, so yeah, I'm Good starting to get busy with that, and I'm busy with work as it is. Good for you. Let me uh, share my screen here again. I know you're just on audio, but uh... yeah, my, my hair's my hair's all over the place, <laughs> so that's that's why I'm not on video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have much. Yeah, <laughs> mine can't be all over the place. Otherwise, it might it it, it might be. Okay, so basically what I what I did, I think uh, I hadn't shared my screen here. I basically just took a single denture um, demo case and I changed it into a byte spin. Okay, <laughs> well, if I could ask uh, just a quick question, sorry, I know I'm late and everything. I'm good. My oh, you were cutting out there for a second. Can you repeat that? I think he dropped off. He might have gotten disconnected, Richard. Yes, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Darn, I wanted to hear the answer. <laughs> I wanted to hear you the have to, <laughs> You have to hear the question before you hear the answer, right? Yes, exactly. Um, okay, no reason to edit this. Maybe, maybe he comes back on here in a moment. And 
find the path of insertion is actually not bad. So if we get a little bit of a block out here, that's fine. Make some room for some material. Um, it's nice to say apply so that we can make use of that free form and block out additional lever we think it's necessary. So, sorry again, are you, do you hear me? Now I hear you, yep. Yeah, uh, I had a phone call right now. <laughs> I see. So what was your question? Can you say that again? Yeah, my question was, uh, is, uh, I'm doing, uh, I'm designing bice splints. And when I get to intoral scan from an itero, um, how do I, be, how do I do that to open the bytes? Uh, like, do I have to do that on model builder, mm. or 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 it's actually on a design when I start designing? Does it automatically give me that clearance? So That's where I'm. You got you got two options. Um, the the better of the two is probably if you if you ask the doctor to open the bite. Okay, that'll however, be better. Because one, one doctor, they, yeah, because yeah. one doctor opens the bite for me and the other one doesn't. So yeah, well, the one that opens the bite, it's easy because I just go by his yeah. by his scan, you know, but the other doctor doesn't. So I'm a little I'm that's where I'm in a little jam how to how to open that bite. Um, I, I will show you on this case here. I know that's not a not a bite splint, um, but I will I will um, just put mode here. You can you can look at the recording at a later point, and maybe you can follow my okay. Anyways, um, sure. so basically into export mode and then into tools and articulator. Because if if you were to just right click, um, it's okay. Leave the gap. Pick an articulator. What you like. Right. Okay, I'll take flat table, and then and then you would open it in the articulator. Oh, gotcha. Uh, because then it opens it according to the hinge axis. The, the the problem is where you are mounting it virtually in the articulator may not be correct. And the best way I think really is to to get the doctor to do that so that they're okay. whatever they want to put. Um, Maybe they want to want to put a cotton wall in, in, and have the patient bite down, or maybe they want to take a something more sturdy than that, and then have the patient um, in in that open bite and scan scan the bite with I okay. or scanner they have. That would okay. be good to go, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's and that's an easy that's an easy setting for them to do. I mean, it's nothing yeah. that they're going way beyond their yeah. their do or their way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. And the, the other option, what I, what I wouldn't recommend because that, that will basically turn out um, wrong, I think, is if you, if you right-click the antagonist, um, you can say correct antagonist. And then you can move it up or down, but then it, you're really just moving it up. Oh, up gotcha. Right, right. That, that's, okay. uh, yeah, you're completely ignoring the hinge axis and it's, it's all you won't be what you're looking for. Okay. Okay, and uh, I have the articulator now open basically, and there is the opening of the bite where I can now say I want to I want to open that by two millimeters, let's say, or whatever you whatever you need to open it, and then you can measure uh, pretty decent with the cut view. I don't have any teeth on the on the maxillary, right. otherwise right. I would have taken a cut view and then and taken a yeah. measure and what my thickness is on the on the second models. Just one quick last question, and it's about this. So, what's like a good clearance of uh, the doctor should open the bite in order to get a nice uh, uh, plane of uh, occlusion on their splints? Uh, I would say I, I would I would try to be somewhere between uh, one point five, maybe. Two millimeters, if they can, in, in the okay. posterior, and that that is that is um, significantly more in the anterior. Okay, so basically, uh, max would be a good number, two millimeters, just to be in the. That, safe. Yeah, I, I think that would be nice to have. It might not always be be comfortable. Right, right. Patient, okay. they might not be able to provide you that. Um, okay. And 
at, at the bare minimum, like you, you need to have, uh, I don't know, at least a half a millimeter to a millimeter in the, in the posterior, otherwise it's getting really thin. Right, right, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome. Sorry for being late. <laughs> um, so I, I have another, another question for you if somebody else doesn't. Awesome, yeah. So I don't do any removable. I'm Crown and Bridge, and uh, I'm doing these diagnostic wax ups, these mock ups. And the first thing it wants me to do is block out the model, essentially, which I just saw you do with this one. That's what reminded me. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what I'm doing, blocking out the model. What things should I be looking for? And this is a crown of bridge model. Usually it has some teeth on it. And uh, uh, what does that have to do with my mock-up? Um, I'm curious how you're setting it up. I don't know. Somebody is requesting my control, but I don't want to provide that. <laughs> Uh, I guess maybe we have another guest. Um, hi there, Shad. Um, I'm curious how you are setting the case up. Um, meaning, if if you're setting this up as 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 Pontix, eventually the 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 blocker model comes up because of um, uh, the the tissue design. So if you're setting it up in the database as as that you're wanting to design a ginger one, then the blocker model would happen for you. You technically can set it up as optional in export mode only <clears throat> to design the tissue or all the other option is to ask you in the wizard. I don't know if you saw that um, earlier when I set my Pontix up, I had yeah. the question in the wizard if I want to do that and I just say, no, I, I don't want to design any tissue. And then you shouldn't even have that extra step of, of making the blocker model. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not sure because again I've I I watch a video and I try to do follow the steps along, mm -hmm. and uh, each one's a little different, and so it's possible I'm not running into that on every case. Uh, again, I'm a one man operation, so when I say I'm starting to do a fair amount of these, it's still not not a lot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're looking at my screen, I'm, I'm I pulled that case up where I set the Pontix earlier. So yeah. here it says design with thimble, no export only, and then um, export only and design virtual gingiva, no export mode only. So basically, and, and you could say, I don't know, or optional ask in wizard, and then in the wizard uh, click on, no, you don't want to do that. And yeah, well, I had been doing either anatomic ponic, I've done it that way, I've done it with ponic wax up. And just yeah. recently, uh, Miguel uh, was able to, change my layout a little bit and I didn't have the mock-up uh, button before yep. and I'm pretty sure I did the last one with the mock-up button okay um, so again I'm doing one of these every two weeks so you know mm. it's that kind of a thing and so it's not like I sit down every day and do one and yep. um, and I'm not a young man anymore so, <laughs> so the memory isn't what it used to be either so um, uh, but, uh, but I have run into that, uh, probably when I've used anatomic tonic as my choice, I would probably. guess. But to and, answer your question, um, it, it's, it's correct. It's completely useless at that point. Um, you, uh, you would only make a bigger gap. You, there's also no, no point of you adapting the Pontix to the tissue quote unquote. Because that, that usually just destroys your, your tooth shape unless you had a virtual extraction that you made. Yeah. Um, and, and then you're, you're ending up having um, no good intersection uh, through the model. I, I think I, I better have the, the, the base of the Pontic protruding. Let's see, you might even have a Pontic in there. Um, protrude that through the scan data and then fix those self intersections at a later point. Or we'll have the printer okay. center fix it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. And um, um, maybe there's no audio connected. I'm not sure. But uh, Shad, who 
joined us here. I'm not sure if you have a question in case he has no, no microphone connected eventually. Uh, you can use the chat window too and type your question if you'd like. I'm just going to make a quick and dirty um, outline here. I haven't done that in a hot minute. I maybe should have practiced before being live here with you guys. I thought that there is somewhere an option. Yes, allow design on palette which is preventing us from having this fuzzier in the center. There, it's better. And then <clears throat> in this case, we could have played around with the offset setting, made more room, used the free form. I kind of skipped over that. I free formed only a little bit, but we could have blocked out more and made some room for material. And um, there's either handles what you can find online. I think I have some saved on my computer or my server somewhere. Or if you don't feel like using a pre-made handle, um, you could go to uh, an atomic and then paint and pull. And then we could... Um, See here, mark all. Where is it? Weird. Let me do it. It's on. Um, moving parts. Maybe I have an odd color set somehow. Yes. Okay. Must have a glitch of my my color somehow. <laughs> and once this is there, we can say. Uh, oh, actually, reset. And then we can paint it again and move this out somehow and then the free get some thickness on there i don't know and free form yourself a handle somehow that way and then i have a custom tray maybe not the nicest handle what i've done <laughs> the pre-made ones are a little nicer We could ultimately even use the attachment tool, make some uh, retention holes in there, etc. What would you print this with, Richard? Doesn't matter. Whatever was cheap. Okay. <laughs> model like model uh, resin. Uh, yeah, I don't the model resin or or the, the try in resin, oh. anything cheap or what's left over or something, you know, I mean, it's uh, only in the in the patient's mouth for so short that uh, you don't necessarily need like, like the temporary materials and all of that they're they're uh, different medicine class so they're they're automatically becoming more expensive. The try in material is 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 not and the model material is not. Uh, but as long as it wouldn't stay for more than 20 minutes in the patient's mouth, it's it's okay. okay. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I um, maybe because I'm also putzing around with this too long now, but I it's it's a bit questionable. Now, if you don't have the equipment, if you don't have a light carrying unit and all of that, um, you could now send this out and have somebody print that and then send you the thing, but it's probably not the most cost effective. 
and then the the time when it takes me to do this here is um, probably just as fast taking the light curing sheet material and making a custom tray <laughs> to be honest but if you really wanted to make a, a custom tray digitally you could all right and then let's see if it's merged at the end We should be able to export mode here. Merge it one more time. I was looking for um, freeform merge parts, but of course, sometimes it deletes those. They are free form merged, and now we have the attachment tool. Here it is. Now we can say we want to subtract something, and we want the generic. Um, nope, that's not the one I'm looking for. This and the cutout. And then. This may be a little bigger scale. Oops. All right, and then You can make as many as you want. We could, I could have made this longer as well so that it goes through everything. So not just here, but um, let's see here, scale. Basically go through everything. That I'm cutting several holes for some time and I, I can get some faster results and make some retention holes for the impression material there and get the, the axis out. Okay, or create an open tray for the metal if there's an implant involved. There was also an option somehow, I have to look in the in the config and in my notes somewhere there's an option that you can also enable the text tool and i could have i could have made a name an embossed name maybe on the on the tray now that's probably in the attachment tab and that, that's how i do them uh, on the insides of crowns uh, to identify them mm -hmm. um, i go in expert mode after the crown's finished and use the attachment uh, setting in the freeform mm -hmm. tool. And you can subtract or add whichever you want to do. Um, I want to go look now again. Attachment, yep. And then, yep, I just did subtract, but where? And then there's a text mode also. So the, one of the settings is text down. Oh, oh. ha, see? Yeah. Yes. You can, you can make that anything you want, so. Yes. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, it's going to be Peter Smith, of course. Practice good. There you go. Awesome. So you put that in the inside of your crowns? Yeah, I uh, um, because I, again, I'm not doing my own milling, so I'm not in control. Yeah. Um, and so to be able, and, and I'm doing everything modelless. Yeah. Uh, so I have to have some way of identifying this crown number three from the other four I have. Yeah. Um, 
and I and also for the milling lab because they're they're shading them, yeah, um, to make sure they get shaded the right uh, color. And you um, are you putting a number in there then? I've usually a number, or occasionally a letter. Uh, sometimes it depends on, of course, with buys and interiors, yeah. it's pretty difficult. Sometimes I have to put it in a in a positive instead of a negative on the on the outside of the crown. Um, yeah. And See, I end I, up I've grinding played, it off later. But, uh, that is so interesting that you're bringing this up. Um, I played around with that um, when at some point there, there was no option in there. And, and, and somehow there, there was like a thread going on and people were asking, um, and was it ExoCAD experts, I believe, how that's possible. And then I, I, I think Tillman made a, uh, made a post and, and, and said, OK, you can add this and that. And would that be useful? I, I milled around. Um, and experimented a little bit. I feel like when it's on the outside as a positive, it's it's eventually getting tough to read. Well, uh, the other thing is, is it's uh, um, you're going to grind it off, so you lose yes. it. Whereas when it's on the inside as a negative, it's there, it yeah. goes out the door. So, and um, back then in that older version, I had some issues in the intaglio of the crown, getting that to come out smooth. There was always a little bit of a of fuzz it wasn't always as clean I feel like. well um what you do is you put uh there's a check box uh, that says allow any changes yeah. and that seemed to have cleared it up for me when i when i check that box it says allow any changes and again it's faint i have to find i look at them under a microscope to find them yeah. okay but again i'm able to identify every unit that comes my way so that each doctor gets its own, it's all of their own units and they get them all in the same, same little, you know, the correct little box. So yeah. um, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And again, it's necessary for me because I don't have models to put them on, mm -hmm. identify them. So, I mean, it not only works for the milling lab to be able to identify each case, it's much easier for them because in the design itself, it's much more bold yeah. than it comes out when it's milled. Uh, yes. but, uh, <clears throat> but that's how I've been doing it. So I like it. I like it. For me, I, I think um, it, it may have not been in the attachment tool, and it was something what, what somehow I, I before was in there um, tried in, in the regular freeforming. And in the regular freeforming, you don't have the uh, ability to check that box you have to have merge parts for, for the yes that's correct here right. yeah yeah right you have, so you have for, to merge for me i didn't have a good solution I, I didn't even realize that it that it was the text tool was hiding in here in plain sight and the attachment tool that's great <laughs> as so many things are <laughs> yes. i call tech support because i can't do something it seems complicated until they show me where it is yeah <laughs> i like it well, that is that is great. I, I thought that was uh, that was fun. Um, we have any any other questions? Otherwise, I, I feel like it's probably good to wrap it up here in a couple minutes. How often are you going to be doing these? Once a week. So every every Friday oh. now, four p.m. Eastern. Oh wow! Okay. And and if you want, you can you can uh, send questions to Richard at opelandcatcam.com. Uh, I think Holly now created also a form when when you're signing up for it that you can also type your questions in there. Uh, because that, I mean, I, I don't mind doing it on the on the spot, but if I have a little bit uh, of preparation time, I can probably answer it a little bit more for. Right. Um, and one thing I, I really want to point out for everyone who is on here or, or maybe later watching the recording, we're going to have a really fun one next week. Um, next Friday, we're going to have Enzo with us from InCatCam. And if you watch the first one, you already now seen him and he was able to tell us a couple of things uh, about InCatCam. But uh, this next Friday, uh, we're actually going to design a, a case. So we're going to do an um, all-annex case. And in CAD CAM basically allows to um, 
skip the, uh, the titanium sleeves for the multi-unit abutments um, and, and and such. And we'll what is mm -hmm. what is in CAD CAM? You've referred to it twice now. What is that? Um, there is. A recording what I could send you if you send me a reminder your email address etc I can send you the recording from the first one um, or I don't know if you're on, on Facebook on the on the groups um, for the Amangebach North America user group I, I posted it there as well in CACAM is a, is a company which introduces new milling strategies and the use of, of additional burrs what they developed co-developed with Amangebach so the, the Amman Gerbach uh, mill users can make uh, use of those strategies and of that software add-on to mill direct uh, implant connections. And there's a little asterisk to that. Um, here in the US, the, uh, currently only the doctors can, can purchase that because they, they don't necessarily fall under that um, of those FDA regulations. Um, so for laboratory, there's, there's currently maybe not the best use case for the in CAD CAM software, but for a technician who would be working together with a, with a clinician, that could be a good option. Or if somebody just wanted to maybe not have uh, all the, the details of the in CAD CAM uh, are of obviously covered next week, but there's also a bunch of, of design that maybe somebody could get some useful information off. I, I would hope. Okay. Well, I will send you an email and ask for that link then. Yeah. And tell me again, what was the, what's your email address? Uh, Richard at opulentcatcam.com. Okay. Awesome. Good stuff. Holly, do you want to add something? Well, I was going to say they are working on getting that approval. So we're going to let everybody know as soon as they do. Um, but yeah, if you, any questions, we're always looking for good topics for this too. If anybody has any, and yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks Richard. That was good. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Thanks, John. Yeah, the, the, thanks for the questions. That makes it a lot more fun, I feel like. Well, thank you. I felt like I was getting personalized service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good, good deal. Well, then I would say um, maybe we wrap it up. Uh, it's, it's been about an hour. And um, if you have other questions, uh, feel free emailing them in to me and or sending them to, to Opulent somehow. And I hope everybody has hopefully worked now with all the cases and can go home and enjoy the weekend. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.